Good morning, all. Welcome to Morning Devotions with Pastor Sutton here. We're back in the shop because it's Monday. It's my, my day off, So, but here we are. Um, I'm glad you could join me this morning, and I uh, appreciate your time spent in the Word. A, a wonderful opening hymn, What what um, what do cross and trial have to grieve me? The promise that we have in Christ Jesus. Beautiful day, my friends. It was 47 when I wandered out into the kitchen to make coffee this morning, and it's supposed to be up near 60. This isn't a weather report, but I think it's going to be a nice day, and I think we can get outside again and enjoy it. Uh, myself, I'm going to go finish cutting down that tree today, I think, uh, if my body is up to it. Bonnie said I've got to empty the trailer of brush first so that we can refill it again. And I think as long as I get on the truck, I'll move it where we're working when I'm done. But So this morning, our, our psalm is going to be Psalm 80. Our reading is going to be from Luke chapter 7. And uh, our, our catechism will be from uh, the second article of the of the creed and our and our prayers will be what what uh, treasury of of daily prayer has for uh, Monday as we as we continue our prayer life. So let's let's begin in the na name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm again is Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead jo led Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come in to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? Yeah, you have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for your, our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains are covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and it shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted, and for the son whom you made strong for yourself. They have burned it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your face. But let your hand be on the man of your right hand, the son of, of man whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back from you. Give us life that we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> as I said, our reading today is coming from uh, the Gospel of St. Luke, the seventh chapter, the first 17 verses. It's, it's the, uh, <clears throat> the narrative of the, of the centurion servant in Luke, and the raising of the, the widow of Nain's son. So let's... <clears throat> Uh, mm, let's begin with that reading. Boy, we got a lot of people here this morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, Luke 7. After he had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death. 
who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turning to the crowd that followed him, said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well. Soon afterward, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up and touched the bier, and the bearers stood up, and he said, or stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him spread throughout the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> my friends, it is in my heart to go after this, this compassion that Jesus felt for the, the widow of Nain, the splagniste. You, you guys know that that's one of my favorite words, that that compassion that Christ has for her, that he has for us when he looked upon the plain and saw the people and, and they were like, sheep without a shepherd, and he had compassion on them. So it's a, a gut-wrenching compassion, but I, I speak of that enough, and I don't want to go there today. I want to talk about this centurion, this man over a hundred men, a Roman, a Roman leader, a Roman military leader. He, a centurion means that he was in the command of a hundred men in the same way as a legionnaire is in charge of a hundred, of a, of a thousand men, a, a legion. Um, He's not a Jew, but he's what they would have called a proselyte. That is, he is a follower of the Jewish faith. He, he, he cared for the Jewish faith. He was a follower of God, a believer in God. He, he followed the Jews. He listened to the Jews. He listened to the teachings of the Jews. He prayed with the Jews. He even built them their synagogue, right? Uh, he, 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 this is not a, a, your average run-of-the-mill Gentile. This is a Gentile who seeks God, who seeks his word. And when he hears about Jesus, he hears all that Jesus is doing. And he has a, a servant. Um, some theologians have said this servant might even be his son um, or a young man who he adopted into his household, a man whom he has splugnistheme for, compassion for, concern for. And the, and the servant is dying. The servant is, is near death. And so he comes to Jesus, but he, he's a Gentile. He can't approach Jesus. Uh, Jesus is, a, is a, a, a prophet of the Jews. He's, he's a teacher of the Jews, a rabbi, and, and he doesn't wish to offend or make Jesus unclean by approaching him. And he, he, so he sends some other Jewish leaders who are already with him who have, who have strong feelings about the man because he built their synagogue. And so they go to Jesus on his behalf, and they say, he's worthy of it. Because of the things he's done, right? Because that's what the Jewish faith is built around, the things that you've done, your works. But even after Jesus is returning to the man's house with, with these Jewish elders, 
the man realizes the, the mistake that he's made and that he's not, he's not worthy. In him is no merit or worthiness to have Jesus come to his house, much less come under his roof, where Jesus would then be considered unclean. Um, and so he, he sends another group of his friends to Jesus and says, look, don't, don't come to my house. That's, I'm not worthy of it. It's not necessary. Simply say the word. I know how this works. You are a man with authority over life and death. You are the son of God. You are, you are the one who is doing these things. Simply speak the word. Simply say it, Lord, and it will be done. I, I have men that work under me, and, and I say to one, go, and to another, come, and I say to my servant, do this, and it's done. You are, you are a prophet of God. You are the Lord of life. Do it. Just simply speak the word, and it'll be done. And Jesus hears this, and he's, he's amazed. He marvels. This is a, a word that's used in the context of Jesus only one other place in the text besides in Matthew's gospel this occurs. When he marveled at the lack of faith in Israel when he was in his own hometown. He marvels at the lack of faith of, of the Jews in, in Nazareth. And here in Capernaum, his adopted home, he marvels at the faith of the centurion. What faith it must take for this man to simply say to Jesus, say the word. Don't come. You don't have to lay your hands on him. You don't have to be present. Just say the word. And Jesus, Jesus looks to the crowd. Jesus looks to the crowd. And, and lifting up his voice, he says, he says, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. Right? Pistuo. Faith, trust, belief, right? He's amazed at how much faith this man has in Christ. And when the servants return to the house, they find that he's alive. The servant is, is well again. His health has been restored. Jesus has spoken the word and his authority has gone out. And that's really what both of these texts are. The Lord has authority over us. The Lord has authority over all things. This is coming from a section in Luke's gospel where Jesus is demonstrating his authority over the entirety of creation, over illness, and even in the widows of Nain's narrative, over death. And that's what he came for. That's why he came to this, to preach the good news to the poor and to free us from death, to free us from the sickness of sin, to make us alive in him. And so he goes to the cross and makes the great exchange of his life for our life. He takes our death upon himself so that we might live. And this is done by the faith like the centurion had. The faith that's bestowed upon us in our baptism and the promise of everlasting life in Jesus Christ. If we would but see him as our Lord and trust. And it's not the trust that we do, but the trust that we've been given by him in the compassion that he has for us in baptism, in word, in sacrament. My friends, Christ came to save the sinners. He came to save you and I from sin, death, and hell by his death upon the cross and by life in him. All right, let's continue now with our, uh, let's, let's have a word of prayer to finish the text and we'll move into our catechism. O oh God, by your almighty word, you set in order all things in heaven and on earth. Put away those things from us that are hurtful and give to us those things that are beneficial for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continuing with our catechism today, we're doing the second article of the Creed, which is entitled Redemption, but it's Jesus. I believe in, in the first part of the article we began, in the first article we began, I believe in. And so here, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. So Luther would ask us, what does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, 
also true man born of the Virgin Mary is my Lord, who has redeemed me a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sin, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In that prayer which our Lord taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In our prayer for Monday, O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized in this world. Therefore, we pray you give an increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, come, convert the unbeliever, bring the rebellious again to the unity of Christ in the Christian church, and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church in the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of, your, of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all the government with fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge, a right knowledge of you so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to pious teachers. Comfort all troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick, especially at this time of pandemic. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy, give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. And let all those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels and be a strong help for all who are in need of you at this time. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Luther's little prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that's the end of our devotion this morning. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 930 and we'll do it again. Uh, I pray the Lord bless your day. Again, get outside, enjoy the sunshine, ride a bicycle, take a walk. Wear a mask, I guess. That's what you're supposed to do now. I, I don't know. But um, whatever it is, do it to the glory of God. God's peace and God's blessings. We'll see you tomorrow.